This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map. The Swamp 8 for a 4v4. So I hope you are ready for chaos. I hope you are ready for craziness. And I hope you are ready for some red versus blue action. Kicking it off on Team Blue, we have Sinner. We also have Fate Zero. And the only non-nod variant playing the Steel Talons, this is Tars. And rounding out our Marked of Kane and Nod team, this is Tremago. Or three Tremago? Three three Tremago? Streamago? I'm not sure what that guy's name is. Meanwhile, on the right side, playing the Traveler 59, getting on the red team. This is Cyberstorm. Their teammate next to them, this is Sabaton. For all of you heavy metal fans out there, Blaine is the only non-screen player on the right side. This is Boom. And rounding out this eight-player match, this is Dune Tiger. So we've got ourselves Double Marked of Kane, and then Nod, and then Steel Talons on the left side. Double Traveler, Scrin, and GDI on the right side, which feel very mirrored. It's like the, the Nod GDI team on one side, and then the Scrin GDI team on the other side. It's two Traveler players, two Marked of Cane players, and then one Scrin and one Nod. So it does kind of line up quite nicely. I have not gotten to see a game on this map. This is one of those 4v4 maps that I haven't seen yet. It looks like the layout is a little bit different different than some of the other 4v4 maps that we have seen which is great i'm glad that there are still some new 4v4 maps being mixed into things trimago going for some harvester harassment maybe just getting a couple of units meanwhile everything else gets cleaned up the bikes at least get pushed away they get pushed into the middle of the map and there are at least there are a couple of EMP control centers on this map. Decent number of tib spikes as well. That's uh, at least eight per side. So you do get two per, play per player, it looks like. There is also this bridge on the south side. And there's at least one EMP control center per side. Some early bike attacks coming out here from Trimago. This was like a fast five or six bikes that he sent across the map immediately at the start of the game. Boom has his APC work cut out for him in this case. And he is uh, sending those APCs all over the map. Buzzers not going to be able to totally dislodge the blue team from the middle of the map. And an early MCV move here coming from Fate Zero. Marked of Kane starting to push, so we could see a rush to supercharged particle beams, a rush to that base push, push obelisk shredder turret style with those upgraded shredder turrets from the Marked of Kane players. We could just see immediate pressure like that. And then, yeah, to round out this map, you have got one decent-sized Tiberium field that you start with, and then a massive green field that is shared. Huge amount of Orcas coming in. They're going to get themselves a third Harvester, maybe a fourth? No, I think it was just the four Orcas, so they do not get a fourth Harvester. There may have actually been uh, targeting a Harvester that was already weakened a little bit there from the bikes earlier in this game. <laughs> Two Flame Tanks. EMP on top of the Seekers. And that is going to lead the charge for these bikes. And there's the return fire EMP from the other side of the map. Orca Strike, it looks like getting called in on that extractor. Cyberstorm making some moves into the middle of the map. Actually, that might be a Man of War Sabaton uh, there on the south side. Flame tanks getting eaten up. Okay, Manaware Sabaton is over here, and that is Cyberstorm there. They uh, they look. I'm keep getting them swapped between the uh, the two screen players. Orca's moving in. MCV gets sniped in the middle of the map by an Orca run by. Not something that you see very often. Seeker tanks on guard for this blue Tiberium field. Yeah, there's also. 
six Tiberium, six blue Tiberium fields. I mean, two of them are contested in the middle of the map, but still six blue Tiberium fields that definitely should be taken advantage of. They seem to grow quite quickly also, so players definitely will want to prioritize harvesting from those blue Tiberium fields because that is a lot of cash. And here we go. The epic unit production has begun. We should be seeing that from both sides of the map. Everyone is probably up to tier three, working on their epic units as well. Upgrades are ringing in from around the map. Slowfield comes in. Orca's gonna be able to pick off a couple of units. Going up against the Pitbull's never ideal, but if they get the kill on the EMP control center, that could actually be even a bigger deal than losing a couple of Orcas in a 4v4. Distance pushing into the north flame tanks couple of buggies mixed in and some Tib Troopers with fast legs. Always nice to see those Tib Troopers make an appearance and they are descending upon the warp chasm. They will burst it down and the Buzzer Swarm support power a little bit too late to have much effect on that sheer number of Tiberium Troopers. They aren't Tesla Troopers. They are Tiberium Troopers. Harvester does get sniped. Stealth Field coming in from the Nod on the left side, and we have our first Eradicator Hexapod out onto the map as it screams to life. Meanwhile, back in the north, the Tib Troopers have retreated. The Redeemer is out on the field, currently ungarrisoned by anything. Titans marching up close to Team Red in the south. Team Blue, they are ready to take it to Team Red. And if they're able to secure the Blue Tiberium Fields in the middle of the map, that could be a huge cash boost for them to keep this attack going. Green Tiberium Fields are starting to get eaten up and eaten away, so we'll see how long this attack can sustain itself. Dev Tanks going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Redeemer, never good for the Scrin player. Meanwhile, this is a lot of Titans, but why don't they have rail guns yet? It should be finishing up very soon. I assume that was a priority. EMP gonna be landing off, nails a couple of Dev uh, Devastator warships gets a number of dev tanks as well tripods moving into position here as the tip troopers are here to support that redeemer who steps forward gets blasted and is going to try and make his escape through the slow field through the infantry hordes of this marked of cane player and these tripods they may not be emp by the buggy but they will be set upon by an infinite number of tiberium troopers it seems the redeemer saves itself for now now. Meanwhile, in Southside, the Titans are starting to move in. It's going to be a base push in combination with Titans and Behemoths from our Steel Talons player. Tars is getting some work done in the south, but I don't know if he's going to be able to crack open that defensive wall. The Redeemer does go down. Double Eradicator are now ready to move out into the middle of the map, and Fate Zero is going to need some support in the north if he's going to hold off the double orange screen team from up there. Orbital Bombardment getting called in. It will land on a couple of these Corruptors, but they mostly dodge it. Nicely done there. Meanwhile, in the north, the battle lines have been drawn, and I feel like they should be prioritizing this blue Tiberium in the middle of the map. If you're Team Blue, you should be going for that blue Tiberium. Mass Juggernauts and Behemoths, they're going to be working their way through the armor and through the healing of this Eradicator. Shockwave Artillery gets called in, but it's going to be a blink away not very far that is not a far blink at all as these mind control shenanigans lead to dead behemoths from team blue sonic emitter gets deployed eradicator has healed back up and is ready to go Mass Venom moves in. Mass Venom gets annihilated. The slow field doesn't land. Instead, it's the stasis shield landing on all of these units and locking them down. Locking down that section of the map. EMP lands in the north. It's going to be enlightened and Tib Troopers joining forces to try and knock down this Eradicator Hexapod. Meanwhile, on the low ground, it's going to be an Eradicator and a couple of tripods moving forward into the front line of Fate Zero. Can Cyberstorm and Man of War actually 
uh, break through that Nod line of defense because in the south, the engineers have reclaimed some of the behemoths, but it's not enough to stop this Skrin front line. Although I don't know how much further they're going to be. They're really just reclaiming their own base. They aren't actually getting anywhere on the map. Cyberstorm gets, uh, or Sabaton gets shut down there on the low ground. And meanwhile, Cyberstorm looks to protect his Eradicator Hexapod on the high ground. No one has gone super weapons yet. I feel like Firehawks and super weapons are two things that we should be seeing from these players. Mass Behemoth once again going to war against Mass Corruptor. Shockwave Artillery was already utilized, and Planetary Assault Carriers are going to be able to shut down those two AA batteries in the north. And then the other thing is Wormhole. We should be seeing Wormholes and some kind of mind control or building capture shenanigans from one side of the map to the other. Maybe even a mothership call-in with how connected all of these bases are. You could definitely get two players pretty easily. Overlord's Wrath called in doesn't actually knock down the disruption tower. Eradicator Hexpod, on the other hand, back up to full health. Catalyst Missile fires off in the north, gets itself the Growth Accelerator on the big field. EMP once again lands, this time on the Eradicator Hexpod. Maybe the Chain EMP can help lock it down as the Raider Buggies move into position, but so do the Corruptors. One Rage Gen fires off. It's enough to keep this Eradicator locked down, but of course the Corruptors had already been given their commands. Planetary Assault Carriers moving forward. Dune Tiger hoping to break out of his base into the middle of the map, and the first Rift Generator comes on to the scene courtesy of Dune Tiger in a pretty safe position, but it's not yet guarded by many anti-air defenses. Eradicator Hexpod blinks forward. Not sure that that was the right move for Cyberstorm. He might end up regretting that one. Sinner and Tar have, or Streamigo and Tars have been pushed back from the middle of the map. EMP lands on the Eradicator, but so does the Phase to keep the Eradicator and the Annihilator Tripod safe from the Tibcore missiles of Fate Zero. Fate Zero and Sin are not able to reclaim their position close to the Skrin base just yet. Tripods getting targeted. We'll be able to clean up these tripods, but the Devastator warships will continue to chip away at this base and at this front line. This is where those stealth towers are so useful from the Skrin player or from the Nod players. Pack gets annihilated. Firehawks will be able to return to base. They'll be able to get home. But yeah, those stealth generators are so incredibly useful for these base assaults and for any potential mind control shenanigans that a screen player might try to pull. Meanwhile, one pit bull goes for the scout. I thought that was a, I assumed that was a wormhole. I assumed that was some kind of teleportation tech, but no, it's just a pit bull walking across the map, finding some vacancy. Boom, who we have not talked about very much, has certainly gone big into the juggernaut game. And uh, he's not even targeting the avatars, he's targeting the enlightened squads with his mass juggernaut packs are going to pursue. And Tars has our second super weapon of the game. Ion Cannon is ready to go in about six minutes and 45 seconds. Dune Tiger moves, I assume, one of his drone ships. I assume he has many drone ships, but no, just two drone ships for it looks like for the current moment. Nod Frontline. Okay, the blue team has actually harvested all of that blue Tiberium, which is very good for them. Fate Zero sitting on a 10k bank. That is actually uh, quite surprising. Basically, everyone else has spent their money. Doom Tiger has a 5k bank. Fate Zero has a 10k bank, which feels like that could be utilized for something. Uh, maybe eight Vertigo Bombers would be a good tactic. And we do have a Temple of Nod way in the back line. Once again, I feel like Firehawks are going to be the name of the game for this match. Eight Firehawks. Strato fighting across the map if you're worried about that super weapon being utilized. 
not necessarily something you can do as the Tiberium disappears from the map. Eradicator blinks away. Stealth tanks get eaten up. Fate Zero's stealth tanks need to avoid that Eradicator if they want to keep their lives. And oh, Devastator warships. I mean, even if you deploy, they're going to do massive damage to the MCV. But Fate Zero not quite realizing that his MCV is there. Area Mind Control will cause the sell-off courtesy of Cyberstorm. Tripods in the back of your base. Fate Zero getting caught. Sinner is going to have to deal with this as well. Magnetic Mine on top of the wormhole. A nice move there. Prodigy sticks its head out for just a moment and then it disappears. And the tripods are going to phase and I guess stomp their way because, yeah, that wormhole has evaporated. So they're going to just stomp their way to the other side of the map. A couple of bikes, couple of buggies going in for the late game harass there in the northern corner of the map. EMP going to be helping to lock down these tripods and stop them from stomping their way out of this base. I mean, it's five tripods to potentially be taken. Rage Gen fires off. Juggernaut still hammering away at that Redeemer, but he will be able to walk it off for the current moment. Beacon gets called in. One of the, one of the super weapons did get eliminated. The nuke from one of our Nod players got cleaned up. Blink forward. Okay, it's just a blink towards the Titans. Not anything to worry about. Spectre Artillery set up in support of this Redeemer. However, the Eradicator moves in. Sinner moves in with his Laser Capacitor Venoms to put a little bit of extra damage, but I'm not sure how much that's really going to be doing to that Eradicator Hexapod. Everybody happy to take a little bit of breather here as the income has evaporated. Dune Tiger sitting at 230k total resources gathered, and boom! making up the difference there only at 77k total resources gathered eradicator hexpod takes a big volley of shots double triple volley specters are a little bit late to the party a blink away will have to happen to save it emp lands right as the blink was going to happen the timing there could not have been better one minute on dune tiger's rift generator it needs to be dealt with or it could delete a big chunk of an army a rift generator by itself won't win a game like this, but it could delete a big chunk of an army. It could open up a weakness and allow one of the teams to punch on through. This really has been a 2v2 in the north and 2v2 in the south. Streamago and Tars versus Boom and Dune Tiger. And then in the north, it's Sinner and EMP. Uh, that almost was a massive EMP, but it basically was a nothing EMP. Uh, Fate Zero and Sinner versus Mana War Sabaton and Cyberstorm in the north. So it's a 4v4, but it really is two sets of 2v2s, the way that this is currently being played. Nuke is back on the way for uh, Trimago. Three Trimago. I feel like, you know, it's just Streamago, but that almost feels like... Uh, a sponsor that feels like a company name that makes some streaming product for people uh, is this lightning spike it literally can't attack anything because everything is stealthed <laughs> which is not something you see very often a lightning spike just is sitting there surrounded by enemies and then it just gets deleted Spectre Artillery going to be landing a couple of shots. Wormhole or uh, Rift Generator cleans up a number of uh, now the tib, the tib Trooper gets the protection on the husks. Cleans up five of those uh, avatars. Sabaton throws a beacon in the north. Orbital Bombardment finishes up there on those juggernauts. And the Rift Generator has opened up one section of the map. But will they be able to push on forward? Blink back by the Eradicator Hexapod to safety. And either an Orca Strike or I think a Fuel Air Bomb coming in here. We'll see if it actually lands from the Nod player. Packs from Dune Tiger need to back themselves up. They are getting overwhelmed by Supercharged Particle Beam Venoms. And they're pursuing that Redeemer, but they just won't get it. The packs do fall. 
and the shots won't land on that Redeemer. Meanwhile, another wormhole opens up an opportunity for Cyberstorm to get across the map. EMPs need to land, but the phase will also keep these units alive, and this tripod is doomed, but the Eradicator will be safe for now. Tripod or Juggernaut's making their way back home because of that phase, and meanwhile, the Stasis Shield locks that Redeemer in place. Can the teleport happen after the phase wears off before these units get annihilated? Tars has less than 30 seconds on his Ion Cannon. MCV low on health, but I assume this is not Cyberstorm's only MCV. Actually, that might be Man of War's MCV, not Cyberstorm. Spectres are going to have to move back. Eradicator Hexpod does finally go down. And no teleportation and Fate Zero coming in big with the infantry numbers to help get that kill. Dune Tiger and Boom have bought themselves a ton of space. And uh, Dune Tiger being like, or somebody being like, hey, why do you have all of these juggernauts there? Well, good thing they weren't here. Bye bye to the juggernauts. The rig as well goes down. And uh, well, we got four minutes until a nuke, four minutes 30 until a rift generator is ready to go. Spectre Artillery's coming in. Orca Strike as well. I love the cleanup on the husks. Even the Harvester will uh, potentially get a husk there. Oh, he and his he's doing it intentionally. You can drive over husks to kill them off. This Redeemer getting very close to that Rift Generator. Uh, you better hope that he doesn't get all the way to it, but a stealthed Redeemer with a flame and an engineer can survive a long time. Dune Tiger needs to get that drone ship out of there, but uh, I think it might be... Well, it might not be too late. If he times it right, he might be able to avoid that uh, Redeemer shot. Rift Generator in the north. I guess that will be protected. Tripod's trying to move in. Pax in the south. Will they be able to save this? Massive number of beacons from these like seven or eight juggernauts that are just sitting there doing nothing. The Redeemer does go down, but so does the drone ship. And have the Juggernauts finally moved? No, they have not. Boom! Going a little bit AFK with these Juggernauts, which is why Dune Tiger was spamming them with beacons. Like, why are you not doing anything with them? And his, uh, his ally for the current moment is just ignoring him. Overlord's Wrath firing off, but this is an economy Overlord's Wrath because it does spawn a little square of nine patches of Tiberium. Prodigy or a Mastermind gets sniped in the north there, and everything has calmed down. Five grand in the bank for a number of these players. They do want to keep a little bit on hand for those support powers as the timers come back up. You want to be able to nuke an enemy's army if you get the opportunity. Spectre Artillery land their shot. A shadow team moved into position to get that beacon. And the beacon does get cleaned up. Nicely done there, but the Seeker trades its life for it. This Stealth Redeemer has done more than almost anything else. Sabaton almost loses that drone ship rebuild, but it does escape just in time. And it's getting blasted by, I think, the Rage Gen as it almost gets annihilated there. Cyberstorm is going to be losing his own drone ship. Meanwhile, Dune Tiger is taking an aggressive position in the middle of the map looking for the kill or looking for the control of these blue Tiberium fields and hoping that he can open up some space for his teammates in the north. Juggernauts have moved forward. Boom has been defeated and hands everything over to Dune Tiger, which works out nicely because they were neighbors anyways. So Dune Tiger now has control of those Juggernauts. Another Rage Gen going to be firing off the 4v3 might actually be benefiting the team on the right more because it means Dune Tiger will have a unified Juggernaut Scrin army instead of a uh, ununified, a split army where uh, the players aren't necessarily working in coordination with each other. 40 seconds until the nuke is ready to go, 4 minutes and 30 until the next nuke after that, but an ion cannon or a rift generator will happen first. 
Packs set up in the middle of the map. One player down, it's still winnable. Once again, an economy overlord's wrath being called in. 15 seconds on the nuke. Cyberstorm needs to be careful with that eradicator. There's the blink back. Nuke could land here on top of the packs, on top of the juggernauts. Dune Tiger decides that is where it's going to be used, and he splits his forces. I'm not sure if that was, uh, if he saw some kind of signal, but the nuke has been paused. I don't know. There isn't necessarily a great target. You could use it to eliminate all of these corruptors, and that would at least get, uh, clear away the, the healing. But yeah, Dune Tiger was kind of predicting that's where the nuke would go, and now it hasn't gone anywhere. But Dune Tiger's Rift Generator is almost ready to go. It is safe! No, it isn't safe! It does get utilized, but it has to be used in a hurry because it is now gone. Cyberstorm has his own Rift Generator added into the mix, and the nuke still hasn't fired off. I think uh, Streamigo still holding that one in his back pocket. And those Spectre Beacons coming in clutch in this game. Not often do we see them utilized. Redeemer does go down. Dune Tiger finds a bit of space in the south to push in. Able to eliminate that. Did he find the nuke location? Able to eliminate that Redeemer. Nuke still hasn't fired off. There was another beacon where I thought the nuke was going to be, but no, it wasn't. Reinforcements get called in. EMP lands on the Eradicator, but with the healing, it still doesn't matter. Juggernaut's going to be turning around, heading for another battle line, potentially. And oh, massive strike in the air, I think, there. And the EMP will land on the Eradicator, but there's going to be the phase, and the nuke still hasn't fired off. EMPs from the buggies. It feels like Fate Zero and Sinner are starting to gain some momentum in the north. And uh, four super weapons versus one. Engineer gets sniped, so do a bunch of cultists from the right side. Dune Tiger with another super weapon. But I guess from the red side of the map, it can only ever be three versus four in terms of super weapons. 30 seconds until the Ion Cannon. EMP wears off, but there's going to be the repeat EMP on the Eradicator right as the phase finally expires. Lots of super weapons coming up in the next couple of minutes. There will be three of them potentially that could fire off in the next two minutes. A second phase from a teammate to keep the Eradicator alive. And the Eradicator trying to get some space away from that tripod, but it's just not Ooh. happening. Blink back right as the EMP misses on that Eradicator. And now this middle of the map is looking pretty juicy for a super weapon. Ion Cannon or a nuke, either one could be potentially very powerful there. And uh, who knows, you might have to use the nuke or the Ion Cannon on this Eradicator just to kill it off because of all of the phases that have been keeping it alive. But finally, Dune Tiger does lose that Eradicator. Shadow Team going for the scout, going for the potential beacons to be able to allow the team on the blue team to be able to launch that artillery assault. Scan comes in. Pax and Devastator Warships going to be pushing Team Blue back. Ion Cannon will clean up one pack. No. The packs all get out of range. The little beams that come down, they do damage uh, aircraft, but I'm not sure about the main beam afterwards. That might have been one of those things that changes. Tripod will not get the kill on that nuke. Wormhole, not successful in that sense. Storm Column is here, <laughs> snipes the bike, but the Redeemer will survive for now. The nuke still ready to go, but not being utilized anywhere. Second nuke ready to go from Fate Zero. Fires off, lands in the back line. No, that was something else. I thought I saw the nuke uh, going up, but no, it wasn't. Spectre Artillery launching their shots. EMP fires off. A Shockwave Artillery lands somewhere on the map. 
Redeemer runs for his life once again, and the nuke will finally find its spot somewhere on this battlefield. On top of the packs, they all go down, saving that Redeemer as Dune Tiger once again has an army eliminated by a superpower. Juggernauts making their way forward. Decent amount of blue Tiberium there in the south being beaconed by, uh, by blue team. Another nuke is ready to go. Two minutes until Cyberstorm's Rift Generator after that. And Bike Buggy making a comeback once again in the north, moving in for the harassment. Going to be targeting down these harvesters. Might be able to grab the Growth Accelerator on exit. Nope, not quite. Only takes a couple of shots, and sometimes they just land as the units are transitioning out. What was that? I don't know what that was. Maybe that was a nuke finally landing somewhere. There it was. Those corruptors finally getting eliminated. Firehawk comes by for a drive-by against the pack, but it's not going to be enough. EMP as the Raider Buggies called for transport? So the carry-all picked up a bike and none of the Raider Buggies. I'm not sure if that was a misclick or if that was intentional. Rage Gen fires off. Eradicator Hexpod going to take a decent amount of damage from the packs. Juggernauts as well, but there's the blink away. The Eradicator Hexpod still being targeted. That might be a misclick with how long they were attacking that. I'm not sure. Spectre Artillery, love the use of the Spectre Artillery beacons by Fate Zero. He's been really consistent with that throughout this game. It allows him to keep this massive army of Spectres in the back line. A couple of shadow teams watching over the right side of the map. Another slow field gets called in. Spectre Artillery just eliminating everything that they possibly can in that area. So many shots fired and landing. Packs trying to keep the front line moving forward. Dune Tiger, he's fighting a 1v2 in the south and he's doing an okay job holding his own, but I'm not sure if he uh, has the income to keep all of the, the other side of the map off of his back. He has for now, he's kept the front line in the middle of the map. He's managed to keep that alive. Uh, potential phase almost landed there. EMP lands on top of the tripod. Only one of them is actually effective. The other is just lose their, uh, lose their shields, it looks like. EMP lands on top of that Eradicator Hexpod. Cyberstorm will take a loss here. I think he's going to lose that Eradicator. Double Redeemer here from Fate Zero and Sinner joining forces. And a Mind Drop on top of it as well, just for good measure. Marv, not quite done. The, uh, the Eradicator Hexpod stepped on out. And yeah, maybe these packs can help break the logjam in the north. Team Blue, I feel like they really need to join together. They've been fighting this war of attrition on the front line, and I'm not sure that the Redeemers are going to get the job done by themselves. Pax, on the other hand, getting overwhelmed by the sheer Venom numbers. The combination of Nod Venoms and Supercharged Particle Beam Venoms making short work of those packs. And the Venoms all explode courtesy of this one Plasma Missile Battery. Shadow Team's moving in. Four seconds for the Rift Generator of Dune Tiger. There's so many potential targets that you could uh, land on. Shockwave artillery firing off, lands on top of the Redeemer, and that Redeemer will go down. Finally, one of these stealth Redeemers actually does fall. Dune Tiger has a Rift Generator ready. Gonna try and chase this Redeemer in the south. There's so much stealth from these Nod players. It's difficult to deal with their stealth Redeemer, especially when they've got the flame unit inside of them. 
50 seconds until the ion cannon. Everything else is a little bit further away. Eradicator keeps the front line moving. Another eco uh, overlord's wrath. Shadow team's getting sniped. Fate zero. He'll land a couple of good shots, but uh, won't be able to survive. I'm not sure what he took down. Maybe it was the tier three of Cyberstorm. 15 seconds until the Ion Cannon. Juggernaut's gonna try and push back the Nod forces, the Nod Steel Talons forces. Dune Tiger has once again regrouped. Uh, Rift Generator finally fires off, knocks down a couple of behemoths, will help knock down that Conyard as well. Phase to absorb the Ion Cannon, but the Tripods will not survive it. Pack getting assaulted there as the EMP doesn't actually land. Oh, I think it actually did land on the Venoms in the north there. And the Marv not... What is the Marv actually doing? The Marv is going to go down. Unfortunately, the area mind control will not save the Marv as the Venoms move in and get annihilated. Even the Prodigy survived there. But I think the drone ship and the Eradicator will be eliminated. One of the Nod players has stolen one of the tripods from the right side of the map. Bike Buggy once again moving into position. Wormhole to try and steal away this Temple of Nod. I'm not sure that it's really going to work. I think he stole the Tier 3 and uh, sold it off. Eradicator Hexpod goes down. And unfortunately for Dune Tiger, I think he's once again going to have difficulty holding on to this position. Does not try to engineer his drone platform, so he's happy to let that one fall. Nuke ready to go from the team on the left side. Team Blue has uh, double nukes within a minute, so they could hold them to try and line up some kind of double nuke to break open the front line. One nuke fires off. On top of the Juggernauts, on top of the Corruptors. Maybe a bit of a wasted nuke since the Eradicator was already dead, but that is how you guarantee a kill is a nuke like that. Fate Zero has less than 30 seconds until his nuke is ready to go. But I feel like a double nuke to try and break open this front line, like obviously if you if you hit it there, a double nuke could shut down both of those production structures, clean up the corruptors, do massive damage to the Eradicator, but then you have to have some kind of punch to follow it up with, which I'm not sure that they do. Also, I feel like uh, Vertigo Bombers could be hugely useful in stopping a lot of these pushes. Team left side could be going big into the Vertigos with their combination. But they're not. Another nuke does land. Catches four Juggernauts and a number of Corruptors. Dune Tiger getting assaulted. Even the bike's going to be getting in on the action, going deep for the harass against Team Blue or Team Red. I think it was Streamago who started this game out with a uh, a bike harass, and now he's still doing it 40 minutes into the game, going for just a little cheeky bike harass in the back line. Ooh, the Spectre Artillery once again, always splitting the position between these two different buildings. And this is this is one of those things that works really, really well in these big team games. Even in 2v2s, it can work well. Mind Control going to be sending this double vet Wolverine back to the front line. And the Wolverine will get annihilated. Packs from, I think, Cybertron, Cybertron, Sabaton. Fate Zero has been defeated. So Fate Zero walks out of the game, hands his stuff over to Streamago, it looks like. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Sinner is going to uh, now need to coordinate and Streamago is going to be fighting on two fronts. Blink forward happens as Cyberstorm is looking for the kill on a couple of these behemoths. Can he find it? One minute, 15 seconds until Cyberstorm's Rift Generator is ready to go. And there's the Eradicator Hexpod phase landing. 
EMP has also landed, so these shots from the Spectres will help clean up that Eradicator, unless the, uh, the armor damage has been adjusted. Rift Generator will stand strong. <laughs> That was a lot of bike buggy. Uh, maybe they could have gotten a kill if there were, you know, a couple more in there. But the defense was just too good there from Team Red. Uh, Cyberstorm still moving forward with this Eradicator Hexpod. I assume he has a blink away. Okay, yeah, there's the teleport away by that Eradicator Hexpod all the way into the back line for the repairs. Get a little heal up. And the Marv, unfortunately... Okay, nope, Juggernauts are here, so as long as the second EMP will lock it down, the Juggernauts can kill it. Is that a raid into the Behemoths? Supersonic Airstrike misses most of the Venoms. They are ready for another volley. Overlord's Wrath, I think. Just getting called in. Yeah, up here in the north, spawning more Tiberium. Decent amount of blue Tiberium being beaconed. Meanwhile, a massive number of beacons being called off there by TARS. Sends in a huge number of beacons, and the Marv gets teleported away. So it was just waiting. They were just waiting for the cooldown on that teleport. There is the potential if Sabaton would get a super weapon of a 3v3 for the super weapons. Right now it's 3v2 on the uh, for the team on the left side. Another Redeemer goes down. I don't know what this... There is a red dot on the mini-map. And I'm not sure what it is exactly. I'm not sure if it's just a glitch or if it was like a... Like from earlier in the game, if Boom scanned and the game just didn't remove the little scan beacon or something. I'm not exactly sure why there is that red dot there. There we go, Sabaton gets his own Rift Generator. Fate Zero was the one who was super active. Did that Eradicator Hexpod get teleported as it got blown up? And so, only half of it got teleported? If so, that is pretty funny. Planetary Assault Carrier gets busted. And in this 3v3 that has developed between these two teams. It looks like Team Blue might have a little bit of momentum in the north. They're gonna be able to shut down the Warp Chasm, stop another Eradicator from moving in. The bike buggy with the super late game upgrades is pretty powerful, especially from a Nod player who gets laser capacitors, so the buggies get an upgrade as well as the bikes, not just the tip core missiles. Oh. That happens sometimes, unfortunately. We don't get to see the whole blast from that ion cannon. Rift generator fired off moments ago. Dune Tiger has called it quits for the middle of the map. He's pulled back. A catalyst missile on top of like five or six corruptors there to kill them off. Sonic Emitter re-emerges from Dune Tiger, courtesy of Boom. I guess the team on the left side, because they're Steel Talons, they don't actually have the Sonic Emitter. Tripods move in, they get the EMP. Is the splash damage is friendly fire? I think that might have actually been friendly fire from the Spectres that killed off that Redeemer. Dune Tiger moving forward once again. 15 seconds until the next nuke. This one from Streamigo. Husks getting annihilated by those Spectre artillery. Dune Tiger decides to back up. He's like, you know what? I don't need to donate another Marv to the left side of the map. Nuke is ready to go. Marv is going to move forward. This is a completely unsupported Marv. Super late. Call your shot. Warp Chasm goes down. Some other production structures. Tier 3, very low on health. Redeemer steps out. 
This is, I think, going to be just a dead Marv. There's a lot of EMP options on the left side of the map. Venom's moving in. They get the kill on everything else. Double anti-air drop, but the Venoms are happy to sacrifice themselves. Wormhole comes in once again. Beam cannons fighting it out with Sabaton's tripods. And I feel like they are here for the Temple of Nod, so the Corruptors do manage to get it, but once again, the splash damage! What are you doing, boys? What are you doing? Fate Zero left the game, and he handed over a thousand Spectre Artillery to Streamago, and Streamago is like, how many of my own teammates can I kill with these units? And the phase will save. Is he going to kill another beam cannon? These, these, uh, these Spectre Artillery are not doing well for the, uh, for Team Blue now. Fate Zero was sniping buildings on the other side of the map. Oh, he got it! He got it. Vertigo Bombers with a precision strike there. Obelisk trying to chase Sabaton's tripod. The tripod will get out of range. Go for the power plant as well. Ooh, go for the upgraded power plant. I'm not sure if he can actually see that one because of the stealth. But, uh, maybe he will. Tiberium, uh, Seed Tiberium gets called in. Oh, EMP whiffs, unfortunately, but the Obelisk does not. The 3v4 seems to have uh, worked out once it turned into a 3v3, much better for the team on the right side. Another Overlord's Wrath. Yeah, between the Icor Seed and the Overlord's Wrath, the team on the right side actually has quite a bit of late game economy that they can bring to the front line. Streamago has massive artillery, so he should be able to, if he can hit the Corruptors, he should be able to shut them down very quickly. And Spectre Artillery, they, uh, they do some good work in terms of damage. They've got that big damage output when you've got 100,000 of them like this. Blink forward from Cyberstorm as he looks for the kill on these... Oh, never mind. He gets, he gets a couple of bikes. Maybe he got one Spectre Artillery. Redeemer might get trapped here. He might be able to walk it out. Spectre Artillery, uh, they can knock down the Storm Column or the Sonic Emitter pretty quickly as soon as they actually fire the shot. Nice split. Finally gets them both. EMPs. Orbital Bombardment in combination with the Shockwave Artillery on top of those Spectre Artillery. Many of them falling to pieces. Zone Troopers a little bit late to the party, and also they jumped into a mix of Enlightened and Venoms, both with supercharged particle beams. A massive kill there as the <laughs> Rift Generator tears this army apart. No more Spectre Artilleries for you. Streamago gets pounced on there by Cyberstorm's Rift Generator. EMP lands, double lockdown on that Eradicator Hexapod, and uh, it looks like Team Blue is finally going to find themselves another Cyberstorm Eradicator. Phase could help. No, the Vertigo's moments too late as that Eradicator escapes with about 5% HP, makes it away from the front line. Team Blue might have found some momentum against Dune Tiger as, uh... Dune Tiger just has, like, a massive amount of stuff on this map. Okay, no. I just realized that I think the the mini-map has combined a couple of colors, even though they're not combined in-game. Uh, Redeemer getting targeted. Can Dune Tiger shut down this push once again? Buzzers for the stealth detection as the Redeemer does get eliminated there. And the Tib Troopers get pushed back. Ion Cannon, 10 seconds away. Rift Generator, 15 seconds away. So it could be a one-two punch, but on different sides of the map. Ooh, I like the kill of the Tib Spikes going for them. 
Eradicator blinks forward, gonna try and chase away that Redeemer, and there is the lockdown on the Redeemer. No phase from Team Blue, of course. No such luck for them. Ion Cannon ready to go. Rift Generator ready to go. Tripods into the back line, going for the nuke. Eradicator as well. Cyberstorm goes for the phase so he can split up all of these units and go to different areas to try and cause chaos in a minute as soon as that phase wears off. New Redeemer is ready to go. Eradicator getting caught in the middle. Vertigo Bombers dropping their bombs. Two super weapons ready to go. Another one a minute away. Tib Troopers, they're going to make this one slow Eradicator. FaZe has finally worn off. Will they actually get anything with it? There's still so much stealth in this Nod base. You really do need to knock down those disruption towers before you can do very much of anything. Tripods and the Eradicator will get overwhelmed. I think the Eradicator can be blinked away. Man, this splash damage is massive on the buildings. There's the teleport away, and... Oh, I thought the Spectre Artillery shots were going to land. Rift Generator ready to go. Finds a couple of behemoths on the left side. Finds a couple of refineries as well. Gets the Redeemer Engineering Facility, actually. Ion Cannon and Nuke could be a one-two punch from the team on the right side. I don't even know where you would use it. I guess in the south? I guess the Nuke could eliminate the, the planetary assault carriers. Three minutes until the next two super weapons after that. Dune Tiger moves into the middle of the map once again. Mass Corruptor versus the Mass Venoms. Cyberstorm has rebuilt that Eradicator. Ion Cannon fires off. Nuke still being held in the back pocket. Might be useful to use it there on the high ground. Kill off those packs. Redeemer low on health. Last shot lands. The Redeemer goes down. Cyberstorm walks his way forward. Vertigo Bombers and Venoms joining forces to be the anti-air defense. Eh, never mind. Eradicator Hexapod will uh, phase and survive. Dune Tiger still trying to hold on to the front line, but the Corruptors get eliminated right as the Spectres show up. The slow field slowing the Spectres as the Zone Troopers try to find an angle in, but it's going to be the Venoms that save the day for Streamago as someone else walks out of the game. Only Tars and Streamago have survived. Blue team is now a 2v3. Dune Tiger with 600k total resources gathered. The next closest is Streamigo with 423. Tars has been defeated, and it looks like they're just getting tired. I guess they just don't have the economy. They're tired of the scrim. Eradicator teleports to the other side of the map. The wormhole opens up the fight there. Will help break open the front line, forcing the Redeemer back allowing those Devastator warships and packs to move even further forward. Doom Tiger keeps his front line moving forward, and it's going to be the Skrin Air Armada that managed to break through the defenses. The GG gets called, and uh, three Tremago has been defeated. Team Red comes from the 3v4 to the victory. A lot of super weapon uses in that game, but it did land into a stalemate very quickly and never really recovered. That'll do it for this game. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the 4v4 craziness. And this is Cyber signing out.